Hey everyone, it's EJ from iDesign.com and in this tutorial I'm going to be going over how you can recreate this cast metal type or uh, woodblock type kind of look. Um, you'll notice that uh, these aren't these letters aren't extruded. Uh, it's not a straight extrude, you kind of have this nice rounding here. And uh, when I had to recreate this look, uh, I really wanted to be true to you know, how these blocks actually look. Uh, you can kind of see a little bit better here how it's not just a straight extrude. You got this kind of round bevel action going on. And uh, I had to create a whole bunch of these actually and recreate something similar to this. Uh, so the workflow I'm going to show you is how you can make one of these, set it up, and easily duplicate it, change out the, the letter or the font, and uh, resize the block and just keep going. Just keep... Uh, keep on trucking and just blaze through a whole bunch of these so you can uh, quickly and easily recreate a whole entire uh, wall of this. So let me jump right in and show you show you the workflow that I came up with. Um, we're not going to start out with a cube. Uh, we're going to actually start out with a extruded rectangle. And the reason for that is, let me put this in the extrude and give that some depth, is uh, because we're we don't want to we're gonna need to subdivide the front face here and uh, with a cube you'd have to make that editable and do a bunch of subdivisions stuff like that uh, and it's just easier for me to just go into this caps choose the types to quadrangles and just uh, there you go you're already subdivided and you can still have full control over that and it's uh, still editable so all this whole entire workflow is keeping things editable and easily uh, manipulated or edited so you can just kind of adjust uh, for your taste or whatever your what kind of look you're going for so uh, so we have our little block now we need to add our text so let's get a mo text object and let's choose a core font then that and let's go for Rockwell that works and uh, let's just go with E and let's scale that up and give it some depth and we're done there's your wood block just kidding uh, so like I was saying you want this kinda uh, we want to go for this nice rounding here nice uh, uh, bevel um, so actually how I came up with that is normally you would think of, well, just put, don't even deal with this mode type, just throw a bump channel on this, uh, like a bump channel texture on here with a mat of, uh, of, of the font, the uh, JPEG of Illustrator file or Photoshop file, and just adjust the bump or the displacement channel of that texture, but then you can't easily edit that and just go in and say like, all right, well, I want a J instead, uh, and then just reposition. You actually have to make another mat, another image with that mat where you can use that in the displacement or the bump channel. So that's that's the name of the game of this workflow here is we don't, we don't want to do bump channels, anything like that. So let's scale that back down. So I had to come up with a different way and uh, messing around and I mean there's so many deformers I kind of ignore a bunch of them but I was messing around I was like okay I see this collision deformer and uh, it kind of looks like uh, just by the icon itself it looks like something that could possibly be kind of handy so I decided all right let's let's give this a shot so uh, basically I want this uh, this mo type object to deform the cube and kind of give it that, like it's pushing out like Han Solo and the Carbonite, right? We want, we want it like, uh, we want the E to be Han Solo and this to be the Carbonite block. And if you haven't seen Star Wars yet, I'm sorry you don't pick up on that reference, but you should see Star Wars. Uh, so let's, uh, so we're gonna need this collision deformer to deform this uh, block with the type basically. So uh, the collision deformer can't uh, 
can't interact with the extrude nerves because it's just in this hierarchy it just won't work so we're gonna actually have to group the objects put it into a null and if I move this null on the same level of the hierarchy then we can actually uh, get this working so we have the collision deformer applied now we just have to say all right we want this collider to be uh, the mo type we'll just name that e so once I throw the e in there you'll see nothing happens right away we don't want intersect we're going to actually need to choose uh, inside stretch so right away you can see okay uh, this e if I move this around it's pushing out remember see Han Solo his hand all that stuff pushing out um, and that's uh, that's that's kind of the look that we want to go for. Um, we don't want that extreme of a bevel though because it, like, it's so, ever so subtle, uh, but it really adds a lot if you have that effect. So um, what we'll go into here is adjust some of these settings. If you go into advanced, um, if you start playing around with some of these, you can kind of get uh, a feel for what these things do. So if I bump up the steps, can't really see too much, but it looks like it's kind of tightening. Uh, the stretch uh, just kind of stretches things out, uh, softens that uh, that bevel or the the, the deformation. Um, so we actually want to keep the stretch pretty pretty low because we want the we just want a slight bevel at the bot at the base of the letter. And uh, if we mess with the relax, uh, you can see that that just kind of relaxes, kind of like this is a cloth. So we actually want to, we don't want to keep that down too much because then you start getting these jaggies here. And uh, you can actually alleviate that a few ways by doing the relax or by going in here and you extrude. And remember why I said this is important and why I worked like this, because um, you can bump up the subdivision and kind of smooths everything out. And you'll see you'll have this kind of pinching here on these edges. Uh, you can get rid of that by simply, uh, let's go adjust the height and just kind of move the, move the font away from the, whoa, move the font away from the edges or just not have it go out that far because then that'll render out and you'll get some funky edges going on. So let's uh, bring the height down there. Okay. So that's... All right, let's go back into the collision settings here and uh, can play around with the stiffness. Let's see that that's kind of fixing our edges here. Uh, if we get our struct down, it's kind of not doing anything right now, but let's see if we adjust our flex. Everything kind of reacts with this uh, stiffness value up there. Um, so you can kind of play around with these settings to, to get what you're going for. Um, one thing I noticed that helped is if you bring this up, bring the text up, and, uh, and then you then you can kind of get uh, that nice bevel right there. But you can see that the the actual text is getting in the way. The text object's getting in the way. And if I turn off the visibility there, you can you can start to see. The results and it's still not looking like that so we really need to tighten this up a little bit too um, one thing I found that helped is if uh, on the text object you add a, a fillet cap and if you adjust the steps uh, adjust the radius um, it helps out a little bit um, Another thing is just keep playing with these settings to get it to the way that you would 
like it to look. Um, so let's, uh, if we adjust the steps down, so that kind of tightens it up a little bit, tightens it up a lot actually. And then we can use this relax to kind of smooth, smooth that out. And uh, again, we can go, let's actually bring that down. And we can go into the extrude nerves and uh, bring down the subdivision of that. Uh, the subdivision of that uh, cube face as well. Uh, let's go into our collision again. Stiffness just to smooth all those edges out. Uh, let's choose that. Uh, so it's just a, a lot of messing around with all these values, trying to smooth all these values out so you get the look that you want. And right now, Right now you're getting, uh, we're getting a pretty good looking uh, effect going on. It's kind of looking, looking pretty, cl pretty close. Um, let's see if that helps any. No, let's leave that alone. Let's go into, let's make it a smaller radius for the fillets. Let's crease. Yeah, no, that's not looking good. Let's bring that back down. So like I said, it's a lot of time. And this is exactly how I got uh, the look the last time is just messing around. And if you, if you bring this out a little bit more too, that helps. Um, the one thing is, is that uh, you can see that this texture here is a lot lighter than this texture. And that's just because of uh, keeping this smooth, you in a letter press, you would you would need to smooth this out so that the uh, ink kind of didn't leave spots or anything like that. So you always got this dark and tarnished edge. So uh, keeping in mind that you probably want to use two textures, and it's pretty hard to kind of do uh, polygon selections to assign different tags. So how I came up with um, doing this is if you if you turn that back on um, you can see that the polygons are overlapping so I can't just simply throw a lighter metallic texture on that and a darker metallic texture on the block because so if I render that out you can see that the polygons are overlapping it just doesn't look look very good at all so one thing I actually stumbled upon after playing around with some settings is that if I just do a a negative value, let me zoom out. Let me actually take these textures off so you can see a little bit better. Um, you can see that it totally changes how the collision deformer works. Um, so you instead of having the nice round, you have this kind of globby um, look. So uh, one other thing is that if you do a smaller depth, uh, that'll actually smooth a lot of stuff out as well. So uh, I think I actually did like if you do a, a negative 0.5, so you can still see that polygon overlap. So maybe let's do a negative seven. Let's just do a negative one. All right, so now if I render this, uh, no textures applied, but I just, I just want to see if there's any polygon overlap here. So looking like uh, we're good on that front. So let's actually zoom in here. And you see that this doesn't line up exactly, so uh, let's do some more tweaking. But you can see that by using a negative depth value totally changes how the collision deformer acts. So to get the, uh, I mean, sometimes if you just want to, you just want this whole thing to be the same color, that'll work perfectly fine for you. You don't need to worry about the negative depth. But since I want to use two separate textures, uh, doing it this way with the negative depth uh, really works nicely. So let's actually see how this looks with no caps. 
So right now that matches up a little bit better, but not not perfect. And then we get this uh, stuff messed up. So let's actually do the fill it, fill it caps again. Uh, let's go back into our deformer, collision deformer. Let's try to get these edges to map, match up a little bit better. The stretch up the size. Um, let's, let's see, let's bring that down. Do the step to one. So this is kind of lining up pretty good now. Uh, we don't got to get too exact because once we zoom out, uh, it kind of blends in, anyways. Um, and one other thing we do is always. Keep, uh, keep in mind you can up the subdivisions and that'll help get a little bit more uh, exact look here. So let's, uh, let's go in here, let's drop down, uh, stretch down, relax. Just a lot of trial trial and error here. Um, yeah. Alright, let's uh, up that and alright, I'm pretty happy with that. It's not not perfect, but it's looking looking better. It's Bring that down to zero. There we go. Okay. Uh, maybe stretch will smooth that out. And that's looking pretty good. Uh, okay. So we've got the depth, subdivision, all that's good. Um, so now let's actually just apply our textures and see how this looks. Um, <clears throat> throw some lighting in here. Let me getting a little slow in my viewport so let's uh, go to lower quality uh, let's put some area lights in put this at an angle put that up there uh, let's get an area shadow point out all the stops we want some really nice lighting here and let's duplicate this, bring this light over here. Maybe turn this down. Maybe put some tiny bit of bluish tint to that one. And let's do uh, an HDRI sky object. So let's go into our sky object, let's throw Whoop. Let's throw a HDRI on that bad boy, and uh, just so we can kind of hide it, put a compositing tag on that. Don't want it to cast shadows or receive shadows. Don't want to see it in the camera view, and we want to see it by rays and GI, so that's all good. And uh, all right, let's uh, let's turn on the level of detail to high. Zoom in a little bit and make sure our let's put some ambient occlusion on um, so we can see to really accentuate the shading on the edges here. And let's give this a go. So, one thing I'm seeing right away is this texture. If you look in here, this texture has a nice. Uh, bump map or normalizer map and that's actually new to R14 is uh, instead of using bump uh, you can actually use uh, normal deformations and put the new uh, normalizer effect on there and it'll actually instead of just a normal black and white map it'll actually use a UV turn your uh, your like bump mats, your black and white bump maps or whatever, or just colored images and turn them into a faux kind of 
normal map, so it will really act a little bit better with the lighting in the scene. Uh, so anyways, that's uh, there's some nice textures applied on here, uh, normal maps, and so let's actually do cube, cubic mapping here. You can see this texture is a heck of a lot better, so it's kind of just adjust, just these, let's, uh, let's bring this to 200 by 200, and alright, let's do another render here. So you can see the normals, the normal map really bumping into that. So maybe we want to turn down the normal strength a little bit there. Go in here, bring that down. The nice thing is that you can actually see it update the textures and the a little bit of the lighting in the viewer in the viewport too. That's new in R14 as well. So kind of nice. I'm not crazy with the size of the texture there, so let's bring that texture down. Let's make that seamless so we don't have any seams. Um, actually bring this down to get that lower quality. Let's, let's try 70. And turn seamless off. And there we go. It's looking a bit better. So, let's see, maybe we need to shine a little bit more light on this guy, so you can really see the, see the uh, bevel edge in there, so let's, uh, 130, this down, let's bring this light out more in front. actually bring the accuracy down on this. We don't want another five-year render. Hit render. Okay. So you can start to see this nice rounded edge here. It's a little bit dark, um, but you can you can you can see it uh, that nice rounded uh, bevel that I was talking about in here. Um, let me just so you can see a little bit better. Let me actually brighten this texture. Maybe not uh, darken that so much. Go to this texture here and bring the reflection down. And let's bring the, the normal bump down a little bit too. Like one last render. So now you're starting to see a little bit better that rounding. You're still seeing a little bit of uh, kind of gookiness right in here. But again, you can just jack down that um, subdivision setting and that'll take care of that. Or even play around with the collision settings and uh, maybe do the relax a little bit more as well. And that'll smooth all this out up the steps too. Um, I think the steps kind of act as a subdivision kind of smooth stuff out as well uh, so again it's just uh, a lot of adjusting these uh, options uh, playing with the, the depth here uh, depending on if you want a separate texture for the front uh, cap here uh, so you can get the nice lighter metal or wood color uh, on this uh, see how this is a little bit more shiny texture than the than the actual block. Uh, so then, uh, so you got your one block, right? And let's actually go down in level of detail again. And uh, let's actually go way low. 
so we're gonna actually let's just do this the e block and duplicate all of it. Well, actually, let's group that together. So let's just e group, and we're gonna duplicate all of this by holding down Control click, and let's do J because that's my name. Let's block and let's keep it tidy. Rename and okay so we're gonna go in here j we're gonna move this whole entire block over Wait, my name is not j it's ej so let's move that over there we can go in here and adjust the block size let's make this a little bit more square and let's do let's do an uppercase j and let's bring the height down. So that's that's kind of the whole point is that uh, you make one of these, you get the look, the rounding the way you want to. You just duplicate the one block and resize it here. Um, so there was a method to the, the workflow uh, that I kind of came up with here is uh, that you can easily just iterate and make a whole bunch of these blocks because like I said I had to make a whole entire wall of these and just spending the time and getting the one uh, block to look perfect uh, was really nice because then I have those all those settings I just duplicate it uh, just change the letter change the font uh, into whatever you want and uh, you can easily bang out a whole entire uh, wall of these guys so, uh, can do one last render here. And like I said, it does it does it does bog down your computer uh, quite a bit. Um, if once you actually get all these guys set, um, and you know you're not going to change it, you can just make everything uh, editable. And let's see. And I think at that point. Yeah, you can actually I believe you can just cache the uh, deformation so it doesn't uh, bog down. Because I mean, the collision deformation is what hogs up a lot of the the memory. So if I go to uh, we don't want to auto time because it would actually time out the deformation over your each second over your timeline. So we just want to sample one frame. So we're gonna go from start one frame at zero frames, stop at one frame, and uh, let's calculate. This is gonna calculate the J. That's not what we want. Actually, let's uh, uh, update. So we actually need to, I made it editable, but I need to actually connect all these and delete. So all this is one object. And let's make that editable as well. And connect objects and delete. So, all right, cool. So now I just uh, put that back on there and delete the extra nulls. Get rid of these guys. Now, I think we have to reconnect the collision uh, into the collider, yep. So move that object, the J object, back in there. And so we reconnected that uh, def deformation. Uh, there's our cube. All right, now let's do the caching. So this is when you're all ready to go and you don't need to edit anything anymore and you just want to navigate around the scene. Uh, so set the zero to one and let's do calculate now. And that's enabled, so let's uh, let's just hide the E group. You can see my computer kind of struggling before with uh, moving around. So now it's just super, super fast, and uh, that's because that whole collision deformation calculation is now in the cache. So keep that in mind when you actually get to a point where. Uh, 
you want to make everything editable and just navigate the scene and animate some of these guys because uh, unless you work in low res mode or just have it where um, let me actually bring this this guy back or, or if you just work in a, a mode where you make sure you have your your uh, subdivisions up until you actually want to render um, so you can actually animate and stuff like that. So keep that in mind when you actually want to render these. If you just want to do like a print piece or something like that, you really don't have to worry about that. But uh, but when you do want to render, make sure to bring the settings back down so you have that nice rounded bevel there. So uh, that's how you uh, go about creating a bunch of these uh, cast metal type. Uh, here's a, let me actually find, uh, one that I already did, and uh, there you go. I just uh, you kind of recreated this and made it into type. And uh, I think I have my render here, on the desktop. Let's see here. Uh, I think it's this one. Yep. Uh, let me bring this over here. So there it is, uh, fully rendered um, with that nice beveled curved edge down at the base there with the separate textures, all that good stuff. So uh, hope you followed along there all right and uh, go make some wood blocks or cast 